It's the return of the UK Brewery Project and it's the turn of Orkney Brewery. The Orkney Islands sit just off the North Highland coast of Scotland. The island is famous for its Neolithic sites such as Scar Bray and the Ring of Brodga, which is one of many, many man-made stone circles on the island, vastly older than their more famous counterpart, Stonehenge. Retired publican Roger White and his wife Irene were wanting to restore the tradition of brewing to the island. So in 1988, they moved into a former schoolhouse in Kulu or Kwayulu, don't hold me to that pronunciation, which isn't far from Scarborough, and they founded Orkney Brewery. The legendary Peter Austin, who I discussed in my Ringwood UK Brewery Project video, was um, involved in helping build and install their 10 barrel brew kit. Roger, although an ex-publican and deciding to found a brewery, was a teetotaler. Thankfully, he had help in his venture in the form of Rob Hill, who had been an assistant brewer at Morehouse and who was hired as their head brewer. Now, I've looked as hard as I can, but I've not been able to find what was their first beer brewed. I've been able to find out that um, uh, Dragonhead, Raven Ale and Dark Island were around in the early 90s due to awards. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Raven Ale and take that as one of the early beers from their um, venture to try. So let's just grab Raven. Double check I've got the right one there. I couldn't find my other bottle opener, so I've gone back to this little one here. It's an ale, so I'm going to put it in this glass. Don't want any nucleated bases with ale like this. All right, let's put that back there for the moment. And what have we got here? Well, a very, very clear um, ale, as you'd expect, light amber. Lovely, lovely one finger head that's built up on this very nice slow rising carbonation as well. Let's take a nose of this. I believe, just double checking, it is a bitter, isn't it? No, it's a gold nail. There we go. A 3.8% gold nail. Yep, yeah, bit of sweet malt. Let's uh, tuck in and try it straight away. Yeah, maltier than I was expecting. Um, it, it's a gold nail, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that, but mostly than I'm expecting. As you probably know, um, gold nails aren't my forte, um, but it's a solid one for 3.8%, it's not bad. Um, going back to the story of the brewery, so um, they were set up, I'm not able to find what their early beers are, I know they won some awards in the early 90s. By 1994, to actually keep up with demand, a new brew house was built, which they opened in 1995. Um, this increased their capacity up to 150 barrels a week, which in my terms is just over 43,000 pints. Um, and it was just as well because it was in time for when Dark Island um, won the West Scotland Beer of the Year and then was runner up in the Great British Beer Festival Old Ales category. And that obviously immediately boost popularity among amongst their well amongst ale drinkers and pubs picking it up which means they have to increase production so just in time um over the next half decade i believe the brewery continued to produce their range of beers they racked up many awards and they even began exporting um, some of their beers out to the usa any money that they were making profit was being reinvested into the brewery. And also with the introduction of the progressive beer duty in 2002, which I believe I also spoke about in my Ringwood episode, um, due to that um, pro progressive beer duty, Orkney Brewery ended up paying less tax and they invested this in a visitor center for the brewery. Now, Although Orkney Brewery starts out producing cask real ale, they 
had and did move into producing keg beers as well. In 2004, Roger was looking to retire after a solid 16 years run in the brewery. Um, he sold the brewery onto the owner of um, Atlas Brewery, who were based in uh, Kinloch Levin, Kinloch Levin, which is quite a distance south on the mainland, um, in a sense, in the shadows of Ben Nevis area. Um, I did try to pick up some of their um, beers from Atlas, and the only one that was available was Wayfarer. And I think I'm going to give this a try before we go into a bit more detail about um, the merger and the sense of the breweries. It doesn't stop me having another quick taste of the uh, Raven there. All right, this is a can. How oh, easy. And uh, I'm going to pour it into this one here. Looks lovely. Don't want to pour too much more, mainly because the head's going to go absolutely crazy. So there we go. It is um, Wayfarer, 4.4% IPA. I'm going to put it to the side because I don't really have space for it here at the moment. Um, hence, it wasn't showing at the beginning. Now, carbonation rolling up because it's a nucleated base. Yep, hoppy nose coming off it, but also yeah, a bit of citrus. Let's uh, have a taste of this one. Oh, that's um, quite solid, actually. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a sessionable IPA for me, definitely. Um, so, Neil Cotton had launched Atlas Brewery only two years prior. And he had planned to keep both breweries running separately under their own branding, but he had created a new venture called Highland and Island, um, yeah, Highland and Islands Breweries, which owned both the breweries. He let head brewer Rob Hill go after all those years, but thankfully that worked out for the better. We'd um, Rob found in a new brewery called um, Swanee in Orkneys not soon after, which looks to still be running strong 17 years on. That's probably more than can be said for the newly created Highland and Islands Brewery. Um, in, two, in October 2005, um, Orkney Brewery was given a rebranding and that's where these labels you can see now um, come into place. They also launched a lager and although both the Orkney Brewery and um, Atlas Brewery, which could be considered a craft brewery at that stage, were winning awards and turning over around 1.5 million a year. The company fell into administration in May 2006. And this was just due, due to cash flow problems. Um, administrators took control of the business and carried on running it whilst looking for likely buyers. But thankfully, it didn't take long. Um, the Atlas and, Brewer At Atlas and Orkney breweries were taken out of administration in June 2006 by Sinclair Breweries Limited. Um, this was a company that had been formed by a local hotelier and restaurant rest restaurateur, Norman Sinclair, and his wife, Christine. Um, now, funnily enough, the schoolhouse the brewery was based in, in Orkneys, was the same school that Norman's dad had attended as a child. Um, so it's kind of sweet what happened and how it worked out. Um, so Norman set about building a new custom brew house for Orkney Breweries, which was adjoined to the school. And he then ensured the school building was preserved and he has turned this into their brewery tap room with a must-see visitor attraction for the island. I visited the Orkney Islands a few years ago and I did sample some of their brews, um, but sadly I didn't get to visit the brewery. Must see indeed, eh? Hmm. Uh, in 2008, Orkney uh, Brewery fell foul of the Portman Group for the name of a strong beer in their range. Now, I hear you all ask, 
who are the Portman Group. Um, they are a trade group who were founded in the late 80s to raise awareness of alcohol abuse and problems. Um, it's funded by the big breweries in the UK to act as a form of self-regulation to prevent further government regulation legislation. The Portman Group introduced the code in 1996, which is generally supported in the industry. And it was on the naming, packaging and promotion of alcoholic drinks. The aim is to prevent the name or design appealing to the young, along with preventing a positive promotion of strong ABV beers. Um, the Portman Group had raised an issue with Orkney Brewery and their 8.5% skull splitter. They said the name of this drink implies violence and they were concerned due to the strength of the drink. Um, now, funnily enough, Norman wasn't quite happy with this decision of theirs, considering that Skull Splitter had been on sale for over 15 years, won many camera awards, and he wasn't selling in the market that they were sort of saying it would be abused. So it wasn't being sold in supermarket or convenience stores. Um, alongside this, he also explained the historical meaning of the beer, which was to do with the 17th Viking Earl, Earl of Orkney, who was nicknamed Skull Splitter. Though, weren't the Vikings generally associated with being drunk? Um, yeah. Well, due to pressure from other brewers, camera and the public, the Portman Group backed down on their complaints. Um, and it wasn't upheld at that stage. Now, I've opened two beers. I've had a, a few sips of them. Uh, I've had the Raven, which is 3.8% decent, and the IPA, which is the better of the two. Very sessionable. But with all that talk of Skull Splitter, I think it's time we uh, pull the Skull Splitter out. Had it hidden away around the back here. Um, again, I want a non-carbonated glass. It's only 330 mil, but it is 8.5% still. Let's get this open. And let's get this poured into the glass. Now, that's nice and dark. Again, not pouring it all, just put it to the side. Have a quick look at it. So um, it's been... I, I think this would have been the brand at that time, actually. I was thinking of the original branding and it's got like a cartoony, I would say, Viking or, uh, yeah, can't say cartoony because that might then appeal to children, but a Viking nonetheless, and eight and a half percent. Here we are in this glass here. It's a dark ruby color, I would say. You can see the light through it. Um, a head has, developed on it, which is not that normal for strong beers, a thin head, but it is staying there still, starting to dissipate. Oh, it, it smells strong, I'll tell you that straight up. But it's a, it's a sweet malt smell, nice sweet malt smell. I'm looking forward to this one. Let's give it a taste. I was expecting it to be more boozy. It's not as boozy as I thought. Good carbonation there. I think it smells strong. It has an, a slight after feel of, of warmth maybe but it um, certainly doesn't give off that alcohol hit, which does make it dangerous. Hmm, you could have a few of those and uh, not realize, but no, I think it does, it, it's sort of boozy. It's boozy in everything but that, um, mouthfeel taste otherwise the, the nose gives away it's boozy so yeah you wouldn't have too many of these i don't think uh 
nice little bottle. It's the only one that's in the smaller bottle size. Oh, I say that actually, I lie, I, as he looks around over there at the end of his table. And um, you've got the craft cans um, from Atlas. In 2010, uh, Norman actually closed the Atlas Brewery in Kinloch 11. Um, but he continued to brew some of those beers at the Orkney and they've still got the Atlas name, um, hence why I had one of those cans. It's not years and years old. Um, like the first 10 years of its history, the next 10 years seen the brewery continue to win awards, introduce some new brews and generally continue trading strong. There's not really too much to say about it. In 2020, like the rest of the brewing world, COVID hit, um, but thankfully they were quick to adapt. And in April, 2020, they opened their online shop, which is where I've bought all my beers from. They seem to be coping well in the current climate, but breweries, pubs, and bottle shops still require your support. So if you can do give it to them, please. Um, so that sort of brings us up to date where they are at the moment. And uh, this time, this is where I generally talk about their beers. Um, their core beers, I'll start with first. So um, we have Dark Island, which is a 4.6% um, old ale or dark ale, depends how you want to categorize it. Then we have uh, Dragon Head, which is a 4% stout. Uh, we have our Raven, which I said is a 3.8% amber um, golden ale. Golden Ale, Amber Ale, Amber Golden maybe. And then we've got uh, Red, McGreg Ma Red McGregor, which is a 4% uh, Red Ale. Uh, we've also got, uh, if I'm looking correct, Northern Lights, no, Northern Light, um, which is a 4% Blonde. Uh, Puffin Ale, which is a 4.5% English uh, Bitter. And Island Life, which is a 3.7% Session IPA, which is the only one that hasn't actually got the um, Orkney uh, cap on top. Uh, all the rest have the Orkney cap on top. This one uh, is a plain cap, could be shortage. I also note that some of them are gold, like uh, the, this one here. And I'm assuming that may be to do with awards. I'm not sure actually, I hadn't looked into that. Um, they offer also in their um, core range, they've obviously got the Skull Splitter, 8.5%, which would be a Scotch Wee Heavy, and uh, Cliff Edge, which is a 4.7% um, American style IPA. If we look on the Atlas side, they have the Wayfarer, which is the 4.4% session IPA. Very sessionable, I would say. Whoops. Uh, they have Latitude, which is a 3.9% pale ale, and Nimbus, which is a 5% blonde beer. I've had Nimbus. I um, didn't think much of it, actually, before I knew who Atlas were. And many years ago, that was, though. Um, Seasonally-wise, they produce um, Kuti Dumpling, which is a 4.3% winter ale. They also produce um, corn crake, uh, which is a 4.1% golden ale, which I've had on cask before, I know that. And they also do one called Orkney Gold, which is 4.5% golden ale. Um, Andrew's Ale, which is 4.3% um, American pale ale, which they produce for St. Andrew's Night. And last, but by no means least, um, they also produce Orkney uh, Dark Island Reserve, which is a 10% version of their Dark Island, which has been barrel aged in whiskey casks. And they produce a batch every year, um, signed off by the head brewer here. Comes in a lovely uh, flip top cap and uh, a label on top with a best before of March 23 for this one. But with that ABV, you can age it. Now, I'm not going to drink that one today. What I'm potentially going to do is I will do a video of the Dark Island and the Dark Island Reserve together uh, just to see how the uh, younger brother and older brother compare against each other at that stage. Right, we're on to awards. Let's have a quick sip before we 
begin on that. Well, I'm just thinking with the awards, where do I begin? Um, Skull Splitter has won and placed um, in many camera awards since it was launched, um, with its most recent being in 2019, where it won a bronze in the overall keg beer category at a SIVA competition. Um, Dark Island as well has won many awards, with it winning uh, the Champion Beer of Scotland in 2000. It came second for Champion Winter Beer of Britain in 2001, and it's won awards as recent as 2017 from what I can see as well. Um, Red McGregor, which is here, it, um, and Red McGregor and Dark Island Reserve, that's what I was thinking of, have won at the World Beer Awards in 2017 in their respective categories as well. But they have numerous awards all through its history, as I said, from the 90s all the way through. I've just seen award after award for a range of their beers, but obviously the standouts being the Dark Island, the Red McGregor, the Skull Splitter, and the Reserve as well. Um, so welcome back to the UK Brewery Project, and this has been Orkney. And uh, I shall raise a glass and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Good to be back with this. Mm -hmm.